Well, good morning. I hope your Sunday is off to a good start. The Michigan Department of Environmental Quality says its mission is to promote wise management of Michigan's air, land, and water resources to support a sustainable environment, healthy communities, and vibrant economy. We'll find out how they do it and how they're doing from the man in charge. And it all starts right now. From TV6, this is The Ryan Report. Now, here's your host, Don Ryan. Well, Dan Wyant was named director of the DEQ by Governor Rick Snyder. His prior government assignments included serving as director of the Michigan Department of Agriculture under both Governor Engler and Governor Jennifer Granholm. Wyant also previously served as president and chief operating officer of the Edward Lowe Foundation, which promotes entrepreneurship and helps second stage business owners accelerate growth for their com uh, companies. Director Wyant is our guest this morning. Thanks for joining us. Don, it's good to be with you. There are a lot of issues to talk about, but first I'd like the, our guest to get a chance to maybe know more about you. Yeah. Uh, I know you graduated from Michigan State. Did you grow up in Michigan? Is this I did. I grew up on a small farm in Cassopolis. I was a farm boy and went to Michigan State University and got an agriculture degree and ended up in state government. I, I noticed uh, there was a story somewhere I was reading about your grandfather was in the farming business, maybe dairy farming? Yeah, my grandfather had a dairy farm in uh, small town Schoolcraft, uh, right in the city limits actually. And so as a kid, some of my fondest memories are taking the dairy cows across the street and helping my grandfather milk cows. So that Department of Agriculture assignments must have been right up your alley. It was. Uh, nine years as director. It was a long stay. It was a good experience for me to work under two different governors. I had the chance to work for Governor John Engler and Jennifer Granholm and then took some time off to do uh, entrepreneurship but was called back by Rick Snyder to focus on environmental quality and I'm uh, having a good run at that and uh, we've got a good department, a lot of issues, but we feel good about where we are. Well, let's talk about the department just quickly. The, originally the DNR, DEQ were all in, in one group. They were spun off in I think 1995 into separate organizations by Governor Engler, put back into one organization by Governor Granholm and then split off into two organizations again in, uh, by Governor Snyder. Are we on the right track? Now? Yeah, I think we are. It's a great question, Don. Uh, you know, look, look at the issues that we have to deal with. You know, the DNR has uh, uh, wildlife management, they have parks, uh, they really have land management. Uh, uh, a lot to think about. We have everything water, everything air, everything waste, everything drinking water, everything cleanups, legacy cleanup sites. And so the reality is, and we think we're in the right spot, uh, uh, there's too much for any one department director to manage, uh, yet there needs to be a relationship. So I think we've got the best of all worlds where Rick Snyder has grouped three departments, Department of Environmental Quality, Department of Natural Resources, Department of Ag and Rural Development, and my colleagues Keith Cray and Jamie Clover Adams, uh, we work really close to deal with uh, resource issues because of the importance to Michigan. And your department alone has, I think, six or seven different sections with the different responsibilities you have. Yeah, we do. Uh, we have uh, six major program areas, and so water is our most uh, important, most visible, so that we sit in 20% of the world's fresh water. Water defines Michigan, it's important. Air, obviously, clean air is important. Uh, remediation and cleanup of contaminated sites, and when we're a big industrial state, even here in the UP, we have some significant legacy issues to deal with. Uh, we have uh, the need to uh, do uh, waste management, recycling is a priority, drinking water is an issue, and then we do oil and gas and mineral uh, right. uh, regulation. Well, what's the relationship so people understand with the EPA? I know there are times the DEQ is kind of in charge, there are times you have to step back and let the EPA come in. How, how does that work? Yeah, Don, that's a great question. It takes a while to answer that, but it's simply said, you know, we are unique in state government and we administer two federal laws. And so we've assumed the authority on the Clean Water Act and we uh, have assumed the responsibility on the Clean Air Act, and then we have a partnership with EPA and a number of other environmental laws. So the reality is uh, it, it sometimes feels like EPA steps in and interferes with our decisions. Uh, we try to have a strong partnership. There are times when we arm wrestle over issues. Uh, simply said, I think we're in a better position, though, for Michigan to have uh, primacy on the regulatory authority because we're closer to the issues, and I think we understand them better, and uh, we like it that way. When you took over, <coughs> obviously Governor Snyder's highest priority was job creation. Yeah. And some might see a conflict between environmental and, and, and economic development. How do you see that issue? Uh, the governor and I see it this way. Uh, protect the environment's on his card of priorities. And so when he ran for office, uh, he had protect the environment on his card. Job creation is a priority of his. And they are not mutually exclusive. You can do both simultaneously. And so we work real hard to find the balance 
Uh, we say at the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, uh, being leaders in environmental stewardship is our top priority, but being a full partner of Michigan's economy is uh, a priority of ours. And we often hear, and not necessarily with your department, but in, in general, business complaining about too much government regulation. Yeah. How, how, how do you deal with it? In fact, I think that's one of your one of your concerns, one of your priorities dealing it, with that. Yeah, issue. it is. We talk about it in culture. I call it organizational excellence now. Uh, we want to support economic opportunities. Uh, we want people to be in compliance. This is where, again, we find that balance. Uh, we are actively getting rid of burdensome, unnecessary rules. So we've eliminated over 300 unnecessary, burdensome rules. We work in partnership with our industries to find compliance. It's a culture that we're, uh, uh, I think, being quite successful at uh, creating, and it's one that, uh, again, finds that balance of environmental stewardship and allowing our uh, businesses to succeed. I know among your priorities, the, the issue, the copy I had has culture change as one of the issues. I think on yours, it's organizational excellence. What are you striving for here? Well, we want to be known as one of the better departments in state government. And when I started saying that, some people would laugh. The DEQ, one of the best departments in state government. But know that uh, I think we have some very talented, smart people that are passionate. And uh, we want to, again, develop partnerships and collaborations with the stakeholders we work with. You know, I come to the UP every year. I spend a lot of time up here. We do a lot of stakeholder visits, a lot of site visits. And so whether it's our business stakeholders, our environmental stakeholders, who I just met with this week, um, or whether it's our local units of government, uh, we work very hard at understanding what the needs of uh, Michigan citizens are, defining environmental objectives, and do it in a way that we can be a full partner in Michigan's uh, economic recovery. There are some very specific issues I want to talk to you about, but first we have to take a break. Back uh, with the program in just two minutes. Our guest this morning, again, is uh, Dan Wyeth, Director of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. Let's get down to some of the issues. You and uh, the Attorney General were on an important uh, task force, group, study group, having to do with the pipeline in the, uh, in the Great Lakes, uh, in the Straits of Mackinac specifically. W what did you find and what, what kind of concerns and what recommendations came out of that study? Yeah, well, the Michigan Petroleum Pipeline, uh, Bill Schutte, the Attorney General and I co-chaired. And the reason we did is because, one, we had an issue with a pipeline company in Kalamazoo. Two, we have a pipeline that runs um, through the Mackinac Straits. Right. A lot of people didn't realize that 61 years that pipeline has existed, uh, pretty much out of sight and out of mind to the Michigan public. You know, we're aware of it now. And then it, you put on top of that its location and the fact that the Great Lakes are Michigan's crown jewels. Uh, we just don't feel that we can take the risk of a spill in that area. So the, a year of study, uh, we had a number of recommendations, uh, four of them specific to Enbridge and the company that operates the pipeline, uh, banning uh, heavy crude. Uh, heavy crude has not gone through the pipeline, but we wanted to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. There was some interest by some refineries to bring heavy crude in. We said no. Uh, there is a need for alternative analysis so we can decide what happens next, and I think that's going to be a big outcome of this. And then a number of studies looked at statewide recommendations just to ensure that pipelines in Michigan, not only there, but we have 2,800 miles of pipeline, the equivalent of going from New York City to L.A., and so we've got to ensure pipelines are going to be safe because we're going to have pipelines in Michigan for a long time to come. And, and this particular pipeline is part of a much larger pipeline, so... It, it does play a, an instrumental role in distributing the product. It is, and so it does come out of Canada. It runs through Wisconsin into Michigan, uh, down into lower Michigan, and eventually into Sarnia. And so it's not just a Michigan issue. It's an interstate issue. It's an international issue. So, But we have responsibility for the uh, environment in Michigan. Bill Schutte has great concerns for the Great Lakes. We sit in 20% of the world's fresh water. Michigan is defined by water. Again, the location of that pipeline uh, raises and elevates the concern, and uh, we're taking that charge seriously, and so we put recommendations forward that we think make the pipeline safer. And, and even when you say the pipeline is 61 years old, right away, that seems, I would think, raises some red flags. It raises, uh, uh, it raises flags. Now, know this. Enbridge learned a lot from the lessons and uh, in their, in their, in their spill in the Kalamazoo River. Uh, they've made major uh, and significant improvements to their process, and we did discover that, and I think that's a positive piece. Yet going forward, we're going to ask more from Enbridge just because of, again, the sensitivity to where the pipeline is. And on the Great Lakes, invasive species is also a concern. Are you dealing with that? Yeah, I think water is Michigan's primary environmental issue because of the importance of water to Michigan. It's going to be fundamental to why people come to live, work, and play in Michigan. 
and invasive species is the one thing that keeps you up at night because once the invasive species gets established, it's hard to turn the clock back. And so Michigan has led on ballast controls. The governor is going to get real, has been, and is going to get continue to be proactive on preventing Asian carp from coming into the Great Lakes Basin. And so invasive species is a big concern of ours. We've made major investment, new investments into invasive controls. I, I know water is a major issue of yours. How are we doing in Michigan? Are, are there still some serious challenges out there? I, I, I say opportunities and, and then coupled with challenges. Uh, you know that 20% of the world's fresh water, we recreate, we fish, uh, agriculture has expanded and all of those are major water users. Because of that water consumption and the water use, uh, we have the potential for water conflict, and so we're going to have to manage that issue long term. Are, are there any hot spots, any particular concerns, places where we really have to take some action? Yeah, there are. You know, blue green algae in Lake Erie, uh, we have some nutrient issues in uh, Bay City, Lake Makatawa on the west side of the state. You know, we're concerned about invasive species throughout the Great Lakes and even in Lake Superior, something that we want to be very conscious of. Uh, and then water use, uh, you know, we have water conflict uh, in southwest Michigan because of the dramatic agriculture use for seed corn production. And then we're concerned about some of our major trout streams and that we don't impact water flow. And so those are really our major sort of conflict points that we'll manage going forward. The, um, let's talk a little bit about mining. Mining, of course, is part of the history here. Uh, a few years ago, more than a few now, I guess, the, the regulations were changed. Yeah. Your department has a big responsibility in the permitting. Is the system working, do you think? We think it is. Uh, mining is uh, showing some resurgence in the Upper Peninsula. Eagle Mine started that. You know, we've got two other uh, sites that are in active development. There's some other in the queue that we anticipate could come. Uh, a lot has happened in mining over the years. Technology has improved. The regulations have improved. We think we have a model statute that allows us to protect the environment. And so we'll take that responsibility uh, very seriously. And so. Uh, we're not a shill for the mining companies. So we work uh, very aggressively to ensure that they're meeting environmental standards and we'll continue to do that. We're gonna take a break. I've, I've still got a lot more questions I wanna ask you. We'll get back with more on those in just a couple of minutes. Back with more on the Ryan Report after we take this break. Our guest again is Dan Wyant, the director of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. One of the issues out there is fracking, and this has really contributed a lot to uh, the U.S. gaining new sources of energy, creating a lot of jobs, but it's not without, not without some environmental issues. What, what, what's your position on fracking, and do we have adequate regulation? Do we need to look more at this issue? Right. Uh, Michigan is a top 10 oil and gas state. A lot of people don't realize that, and so we have oil and gas development in Michigan, one, two. We do believe we have a model fracking law, and you're right when you say fracking and the new technologies has allowed the U.S. to find more oil and gas, become more energy independent, and it has lowered our energy costs here in the short term and has the potential over the longer term, so that's all been positive. Yet there are some environmental concerns. You certainly don't want uh, uh, any of the fracking fluids or any oil and gas to get into our drinking water. Uh, water use and making sure we're managing water use around fracking I think are really important issues and then there's the chemical disclosure piece and ensuring that if there was a spill that we could respond effectively. Those are real issues. Our model fracking law uh, has been amended a couple times since uh, uh, Governor Snyder has been here and we hold it up as a national standard. You know we fracked 14,000 wells in Michigan uh, yeah. successfully without incident. Now I'm not here to say that we couldn't have an incident. We see them across the country but Michigan's unique. Uh, our geology allows us to be fairly stable. Uh, our standards uh, are high, and then we enforce and regulate uh, around fracking to ensure that um, fracking is safe. Okay. Let, let's switch to air, uh, and, and a lot of the air issues have to do with electric power, power plants, coal burning, um, new, new EPA regulations. In spite of Supreme Court rulings, there are going to be regulations. Michigan's going to have to meet those regulations. Right. Where do you see us heading in that regard? That's a great question, Don. There will be more regulation on air. Um, We'll see here very soon, and you'll read about uh, EPA in, in initiating uh, a rule on uh, greenhouse gas. And so Michigan will participate in developing a rule. Uh, we'll see, I think, an evolution away from coal into natural gas in Michigan. Uh, the governor has defined a very clear strategy on energy. He wants affordability, reliability, and environmental protection. He wants those three goals to work simultaneously. Again, one doesn't drive the other. 
he's created an energy office. And with that, uh, I think Michigan will be proactive in ensuring a cleaner air and a cleaner environment, but we won't do it at the risk of reliability and cost. One, one of the uh, beliefs, I guess, is that our best answer might be uh, saving energy, that we're wasting too much energy. Yeah. Um, is your department looking at that, or is, does that belong to somebody else? Well, it's the Department of uh, New Office of Energy the governor's created, but we're a partner in that. And so uh, there is a priority on energy efficiency. That really is the low-hanging fruit, and we all can do more and better, and it's something we should do. If we're more efficient in our businesses and our homes, we save money, we save energy, we lower energy costs for everyone. And uh, you'll see more proactivity on that because there's a real opportunity to become more energy efficient. I know that the energy issue is important here. We've, we've faced some issues in the, in the past year and kind of interested in where it's going to go. But yeah. as you point out, a lot of people are involved in that. I know there's, um, there's, there's some changes you're making in, in air toxics kind of focusing on the really bad ones and not dealing with some that, that aren't a problem, that maybe that's just a layman's way of saying it. No, you say it well. Uh, we did put out a new rule and uh, we've defined uh, known carcinogens and we put them on a priority list and we want to regulate those. Uh, we've eliminated a number of compounds uh, that uh, don't have a known uh, human health risk. It allows us to evaluate that and put uh, uh, we do a lot of monitoring around air. Air quality is a priority, and if something shows up, we're going to look for it. But we've streamlined our rules. Uh, we've become uh, a little more efficient with focusing on priority issues that we need to take care of. Okay. Another um, big area you have to deal with is waste, and that's, you know, I mean, it goes all the way from, from uh, basic household waste to medical waste to industrial waste. I mean, there's so many issues there. Yeah. But uh, I know one of the big focuses apparently in, in your uh, priorities is increasing recycling again. Right. How are, are we making progress there? We are. The governor set a high bar and he does that. He wanted us to d double our recycling rate in two years. And uh, we, we're, we're on track. Uh, we're doing that through measurement. We're doing that through a statewide campaign on how and where to recycle. We do that through growing markets because you can't recycle without having the ability to sell the stuff and then we're improving access to recycling. So given that strategy, we think we'll achieve that goal of doubling our recycling rate. Are there other issues related to waste disposal that uh, you're concerned about? Well, out-of-state waste uh, continues to be an issue. You know, we do take uh, out-of-state low activity fracking waste and that was an issue and so we've got to make sure that's uh, done. You mentioned hazardous waste and so uh, Michigan has uh, a great abundance of uh, of landfills, uh, that's to our benefit because throwing things away is cheap, but uh, we, we really want to move towards reuse and recycle. We think it's the right thing to do. Markets want it, consumers want it. Long-term sustainability suggests that it's the right thing to do. Education seems to be a key part and providing people with some incentives, I think, help. Uh, both are right on. Education incentives, I think, will drive the success of uh, our ability to recycle successfully in Michigan. We have only uh, 25 seconds left. Anything you hope to say that we didn't get a chance no, to No, other than, uh, w Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, we think we're leading on environmental stewardship. We think we're a full partner in Michigan's economic recovery, and at the end of the day, DQ will be one of the best departments in state government. Okay, well, thanks for coming in this morning and telling us about it. Thanks, Appreciate Scott. it. Yeah, thank you. Glad to have you. Appreciate it. And we'll be back with uh, some additional thoughts for you after we take one more break. You know, every once in a while, some new report comes out that tells us something isn't good for our health. The problem is they get us all worked up about something, and then a year or two or even longer down the road, they come back and tell us just the opposite. Remember eggs? There was a time they didn't want us to eat eggs at all. Now many health experts suggest we start each day with an egg. And how about coffee? Not long ago, they were experts were saying that coffee was just not good for us. It was responsible for everything from stunting your growth to heart disease and cancer. And now, many are saying just the opposite. An article published by the Mayo Clinic says that studies have shown that coffee may have health benefits, including protecting against Parkinson's disease, type 2 diabetes, and liver disease, including liver cancer. It also appears to improve cognitive function and decrease the risk of depression. So much for coffee being a problem. There are a lot of other examples just recently, I noticed some new reports on the controversy about artificial sweeteners versus sugar, but I don't even want to go there. The reason I bring this up today is because 
I just happened to come across an article the other day that raised some concerns about, and you might want to sit down before I tell you this, it raised some concerns about kale. That's right, kale. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not a big kale fan, but if you were ever going to identify a food that would never be suspect, it would be kale. If you do a Google search of kale, you find headlines like these. Kale, the world's healthiest food. Nine health benefits of kale. 13 healthy kale recipes. Because we love kale. The article in question quotes a molecular biologist named Ernie Hubbard, who says that kale is a hyper accumulator of heavy metals. And of course, we know they aren't good for us. In fact, his study says that not only kale, but cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and collard greens are in the same category. In one fell swoop, he's wiped out a whole list of vegetables that most people feel are pretty good for us. I'm not suggesting you throw away all your kale. I don't, don't know if Mr. Hubbard's conclusions make any sense or not. Perhaps they do. Or perhaps it's just one more false alarm about food. We'll have to wait and see what other people have to say. As for me, I don't eat kale now, but I do like broccoli, so my eating habits probably aren't going to change. I stick with a philosophy that served me pretty well. Anything I like, in moderation. I'm sure this won't be the last time some new health warning about food comes along. For me, I'm just waiting for the day when they come out with a report that tells us bacon is good for us. I think there'll be a lot of rejoicing that day. I'll be back in two minutes. We have a couple of reminders before we wrap it up for this Sunday. First, this show is also available on the internet. If you miss it, want to see it again, or want to recommend it to someone else, go to UpperMichiganSource.com and you'll find a Ryan Report tab on the home page. And if you have any thoughts you want to share with us, drop us an email at the Ryan Report at ChessTV.com. Thanks to DEQ Director Dan Wyant for joining us this morning. His department has a big impact on life in Michigan and it's important that we hear about their successes and concerns. That's all the time we have. I hope you have a great day and join us next Sunday morning. Stay tuned for the Today Show coming up right now. <laughs>